Welcome to Mac Machine Tools. My name is Sam, and this is the Mac MDS 8458 tool. And today, I'm gonna to show you how to program this part using the Dynapath Conversational Editor. Okay, everybody, we're now inside the Dynapath Conversational Editor. You can see the DXF file on the screen there. This can be imported or you can construct it on the control. We have the full editor on board. And now it's just as simple as me selecting the lines I wish to machine and choosing the correct event for the feature I want. You can see I've gone into the tool table here to select the six millimeter end mill, tool number one. And we're gonna use that to cut the perimeter of this part. I will go down the list of text fields here, selecting the, rep, the correct compensation my approach height, my start depth, my end depth, my incremental depth, we'll bring those up to one millimeter. Um, I don't require a lead in or lead out for this. We're plunging straight. Um, we're gonna keep the tool down in between paths, passes, sorry. We don't need to allow any uh, extra material on the part and our speeds and feeds there were fine. So now I'm previewing the tool path and I can see it's doing exactly what I expect it to. 10 um, lines there to represent the 10 incremental moves down to reach a final depth of minus 10 millimeters. Now what I'm doing is I'm selecting the four 7.5 millimeter holes. Now I can helically machine these with my six millimeter end mill. So that's why I've chosen a helical event. You can see the helix in the top. This event also will support thread milling but for now it's a simple helix milling routine. Spec this to suit 10 millimeter depth. We're gonna do one millimeter incremental depths. So for every 360 degrees the helix rotates, the, part will move, uh, the tool will move down by one millimeter. I'm upping the spindle speed because we're in a small hole here and I'm gonna drop that feed rate slightly as well. We're gonna dry cut this whole part in aluminum. So let's save that. Um, we can preview it as well, and we'll see our helical paths there and the connecting tool paths in between. So that looks great. Moving on, I'm gonna add the hole sequence for the four 5.5 millimeter holes in the center of this part. We're gonna use a high-speed peck it's a bit quicker than our standard drill routine. I'm gonna have to start by selecting the holes. Wow. You see the one in the bottom left, I'm a bit too zoomed out to select it, so I'm just gonna zoom in further and pick that up. We'll add the holes into this event and confirm they are the ones we want. The tool is a 5.5 millimeter drill. We'll bring that in. We'll start just slightly above the surface, get some RPMs into the tool, and bring it down to the, the desired depth. Uh, in fact, the end depth there is zero. We should make that minus 10. And it's going to reference our safe position every time it pegs. Switch the coolant off, add the event. Now, of course, we can adjust these variables to suit the material, to suit the machine, to suit the work holding. Here, we're just doing this to generate a sensible simulation. Okay, then we need to take a look at this pocket, which has an island in the middle of it. I'm going to select the two borders, so the exterior border, the interior border, and then I'll pick up the six millimeter end mill, bring that in as well. It's just a roughing cycle for now. Start depth of zero, end depth of minus 10. And we'll use the same one millimeter incremental depth for the pocket as we did for the perimeter. Speeds and feeds are reasonable and we'll add that event. The final event we have is a tapered pocket, which is quite tricky to do normally. Here we can do it conversationally. So let's take advantage of that. Chosen the two paths mode. We're gonna select the geometry by again picking up 
the, it's both borders of the tapered pocket. Command the depth to suit. And so now when we preview the work, we can see our complete component. You can see the, the pocketing out of the central island. You can see the helical cuts. You can see the tapered pocket. You can simulate this inside of the window and it will give you an estimated time in the bottom corner. And if I exit this and come back in, it is even possible to uh, attempt to wrap some material around this toolpath. Simulate the cutting process. And as it machines, you should be able to see the material start to uh, be removed as you would expect in real life. This is all on board, on the control. You can simulate it stood there. Everything so far looks good. So now we jump to the machine.